Ooh, yeah. Ugh, I am so sorry for that awful Macho Man impression. I do apologize, but I had to get your attention, and this game has a very specific audience. So if you could get through that, then maybe you will enjoy as I talk to you about WrestleQuest. Hey, before you snap into your next Slim Jim, did you know that we have a Patreon available too? More on that later. Every game has a tagline. They let you know exactly what to expect when playing a game. But now, when I talk about a tagline, it's also a pun. In the case of WrestleQuest, it's Tag Team with Destiny. Pro wrestling and RPG fantasy collide in the ultimate pixel-powered adventure. If your wrestling knowledge stops from when you were six years old watching the WWF on Saturday morning on USA Network, you might be a bit lost when playing something like WrestleQuest. Many things are presented more in the way things are looked at now thanks to the internet giving us a little bit more of an inside look. If I were to ask you to define terms like being over, a jobber, or a dark match, and you wouldn't be able to answer it, this game is not going to help. But then again, how many times in the past have you played RPGs that make up all kinds of weird terminology that make no sense until you play the game more? So if you did know those terms I was using earlier, welcome, you're my people. But if you didn't, essentially the world of professional wrestling has its roots in the carnival. With everything being rigged, fixed, or predetermined, whichever way you want to put it, they didn't want the audience to know what was going on, and so they came up with their own vocabulary to be able to communicate with each other. Thanks to the internet allowing information to spread instantly, on top of trainers out there willing to share trade secrets to anyone willing to pay a fee, these secrets aren't so secret anymore and many fans know them and it's discussed heavily in the story for WrestleQuest. The story is also presented in another very common aspect of modern-day wrestling fandom, the podcast. For those of you familiar with someone like Conrad Thompson, he is back, and he's hosting a podcast with DDP, Jeff Jarrett, and Jake the Snake Roberts. Yes, they have actual wrestlers in this game. So those names, along with others like Macho Man, Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, and Sergeant Slaughter will appear throughout various points in the game. They might tell the story, they might be able to even help you along, but for the most part, you're going to be playing and interacting with characters that are made up specifically for this game. You start off playing WrestleQuest as the Muchacho Man, somebody who saw Macho Man Randy Savage wrestle, and they too want to become a wrestler. They're going to do everything in their power to become the biggest wrestler in the world. Unfortunately, after that, the story does get a little bit muddied because I guess you're playing as toys? Many times throughout the story, characters are going to talk to Muchacho Man and make references to the fact that they are just toys. They're going to talk about the descriptions on the back of the box or just being plastic, but he seems confused by all this. But he also is confused by the wrestling terms as well. It's almost like he's living a pure fantasy while everybody else is kind of in on the joke. So I previously mentioned that there are going to be characters in the game that are completely made up and these take the form of other toys that this kid owns. So you might see somebody who looks like He-Man, Oscar the Grouch, G.I. Joe, Rambo, even a Mr. Potato Head, but just different enough so that they don't get sued. In his quest to become the best wrestler in the world, you gotta start off in the beginning in the training school. Once he gets through training, he starts off in small promotions and works his way up, but that's just where it all begins and things get a little bit crazy. Now you have warring factions and people fighting in the streets and all kinds of other things that I don't want to spoil here. Unfortunately, the writing itself isn't all that great, but what would be more fitting of a game about professional wrestling? While it does embrace the absurdity of the world of professional wrestling and that is a lot of the charm, it does also overly rely on a bunch of in-jokes and references that could go over some people's heads. Here's a little checkpoint for you. If I mention Steiner math and you get a little bit of a chuckle, then that NPC that you run into will also make you laugh, or maybe it'll make you cringe a little bit because of how overused it is. But if you don't know what Steiner math is, then these NPCs are going to continue to confuse you. As you continue on your quest, you will meet up with other wrestlers that will join your party, and there's even a parallel storyline that's going on with another wrestler named Brink Logan, who is essentially Bret Hart meets the Terminator. He's the expert of execution and talks about not being a hitman, yet carries a case of guns that he uses to shoot his enemies. WrestleQuest will basically bounce back and forth between these two storylines to keep things shaken up so that it doesn't get too stale. The game play is pretty typical 16-bit RPG fair where you're exploring through a world map and completing quests. Along the way, you're going to get into battles that either take place on the streets or in wrestling rings. 
Either way, it's going to be some turn-based combat. Even if you're not a fan of wrestling, the combat will be pretty familiar to you if you've played any 16-bit turn-based RPGs. You have your normal attacks, your special attacks, which take the form of what they call gimmicks and use up a meter, and you can also use items. Every attack has its own unique animation and may also be accompanied by either a QTE or some button mashing to help keep you paying attention. While you're having your wrestling matches, there's also a hype meter that while it builds up, you will gain more buffs but make mistakes or have too many things done against you and it can also go down. And just like in professional wrestling, each match is going to have its own unique rules and stipulations on how you win. Sometimes it's a matter of just beating everybody up and getting their health down to zero, and other times you might have to pin them to eliminate them. It could be one person that needs to be pinned or it could be everybody. It's not always clear, but it's easy enough to figure out in the middle of battle, and the pinning mechanic is just another little simple timing minigame. I will say that there are a lot of mechanics in play, while playing through WrestleQuest, and that's both a good and a bad thing. As you play through the game, it's continuously adding new things to do, which does keep things fresh, but at the same time, I almost felt like it was taking too long, and it felt like it was almost like I'm still playing the tutorial after all this time. When you've played a game for many hours and you still have barely seen any of the much-hyped wrestlers that are in the game, it might keep some of the audience still going, trying to see who else is going to show up, but it might just turn other people off and they're going to shut it off early. WrestleQuest falls into the trap of a lot of other 16-bit RPGs where it's a lot of back and forth in the same areas in the world map, and it just seems to pad the time because you're just running. And even if you are running, it doesn't feel like it's even that much faster than when you're walking. While it is nice to see where the enemies are going to be ahead of time so it doesn't have the random battle aspect of trying to pad the game, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of other things going on in the towns otherwise. Every so often, there might be an obstacle to try to get through or some puzzle to solve, but other than that, talking to people is pretty vapid and it just seems to be just an excuse to get to the next battle. Thankfully, the music of WrestleQuest is nice and varied and will change based on what location you're in or what wrestlers might be around you at the time. It is well done, but it's also not anything that I was looking to be able to buy and play on its own. Finally, a nice positive aspect of WrestleQuest is the graphics. Both the art style and the animation is top notch. Everybody looks exactly like you think that they should, and it's a nice fluid motion to it as well. As a 2D game, there really aren't a whole lot of graphical options for you to work with while playing on the PC, but they aren't really needed either. Everything just looks and runs great just as it is, so why tinker with it? I think that these graphics are going to draw a lot of people to playing WrestleQuest, especially when they see some characters that they might feel some nostalgia for. Unfortunately, it's just going to be a matter of whether or not that they're going to care about the story and if the gameplay is going to draw them in enough. While a little bit on the slow side, if you like turn-based RPGs and some insider terminology for wrestling, this is going to be the game for you. But if this isn't of your world, it might be a little bit too foreign to you, and it might not offer enough to keep you playing. All right, brother, time to take it home. Remember to like and subscribe so that you can give a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming, and don't forget to check out patreon.com slash games. Become a patron to get perks like Discord access, exclusive live Live streams, shout outs, early access to videos ad free, even for our sister channel, I Dream of Retro Games, and more. Join the community today.